Welcome to Cyber World YT. Like and subscribe if you're new here. Also follow me on Instagram for in case of any queries. Today, we're diving deep into the wild world of ethical hacking, specifically focusing on Wi-Fi security. We're going to be looking at some of the easiest ways to crack those pesky Wi-Fi passwords, all from an ethical standpoint, of course. Now, before we get started, remember, this video is strictly for educational purposes. My goal is to help you understand the vulnerabilities that exist in everyday tech so you can better protect yourself. We'll be exploring some tools and techniques used by ethical hackers to test and improve Wi-Fi security. If you're interested in cybersecurity, ethical hacking and staying one step ahead of the digital curve, make sure you smash that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to stay updated on all our latest content. With that said, let's jump right into it. All right, let's dive into a sneaky method known as the evil twin attack. This attack involves creating a rogue Wi-Fi access point that mimics a legitimate one. The goal is to trick users into connecting to this fake access point instead of the real one. Once connected, the attacker can intercept all the data transmitted by the victim. This includes sensitive information like login credentials, personal messages, and even financial data. So how does it work? The attacker sets up a Wi-Fi network with the same name, or SSID, as a legitimate one. They often use a stronger signal to lure users away from the real network. When users try to connect, they might be prompted to enter their Wi-Fi password, which the attacker can then capture. With this information, the attacker can gain unauthorized access to the victim's accounts and data. The implications of an evil twin attack are serious, but there are ways to protect yourself. Always use a VPN when connecting to public Wi-Fi networks, and be cautious of networks with duplicate names. Network administrators can also implement security measures like enabling WPA3 and using network monitoring tools. Remember, ethical hacking is about understanding these methods to protect against them, not to exploit them. If you come across a suspicious Wi-Fi network, report it to the network owner or relevant authorities. Be vigilant, stay informed, and help make the internet a safer place for everyone. All right, that's the evil twin attack in a nutshell. A deceptive method with serious implications, but understanding it is key to defending against it. Up next, we've got another popular tool called Reva, which targets a different vulnerability in some routers. Stick around. All right, so we've talked many times about Air Crack Ong, which is great for cracking WEP and WPA PSK keys. But what about WPS? You know, that button on your router that lets you connect devices without entering a password. Well, that convenience can sometimes come at a cost, and that's where Reva comes in. Reva is a tool specifically designed to target a vulnerability in WPS, or Wi-Fi protected setup. See, WPS was designed to make connecting to Wi-Fi networks easier, but it also introduced a potential security flaw. Reva exploits this flaw by systematically trying different pins against the router's WPS implementation. This method is known as a brute force attack, where the software tries every possible combination of pins until it finds the correct one. If the router is vulnerable, Reaver can brute force its way in and snag the Wi-Fi password. Now the good news is that many modern routers have implemented safeguards to protect against Reaver attacks. They might have a lockout mechanism that kicks in after a certain number of incorrect pin attempts, or they might disable WPS altogether. But there are still routers out there that are susceptible to this type of attack, so it's definitely something to be aware of. Just like with Aircrack Eng, Using Reva ethically is crucial. If you're testing your own network, that's one thing. But if you're thinking about using it on someone else's network without their permission, just don't. It's illegal, unethical, and could land you in some serious trouble. Remember, the goal here is to learn about these vulnerabilities so we can better protect ourselves and others. So if you do discover a vulnerability in your own network, take steps to mitigate it. Disable WPS if your router allows it or make sure you're using a strong, unique Wi-Fi password. All right, that's Reaver in a nutshell, a powerful tool that highlights the potential security risks associated with WPS. All right, so far we've looked at tools that target weaknesses in Wi-Fi encryption protocols, but what about firmware exploits? You know, exploiting vulnerabilities in the firmware of Wi-Fi routers. That's where firmware exploits come in. Firmware exploits allow hackers to take advantage of outdated or vulnerable firmware in Wi-Fi routers. Think of it like finding a hidden backdoor in the router's software. 
Once a hacker gains access through this back door, they can launch a variety of attacks, including stealing Wi-Fi passwords. For example, they could access the router's admin page and retrieve the Wi-Fi password stored there. If they succeed, they've got full control over your network. Now I know what you're thinking. This sounds seriously shady. And you're right, it can be. That's why it's crucial to emphasize that firmware exploits should only be used for ethical hacking purposes, such as security awareness training or penetration testing with explicit permission. Never use firmware exploits to steal someone's credentials or launch malicious attacks. That's not ethical hacking, that's just being a criminal. One of the reasons firmware exploits are so effective is that they often go unnoticed. People often neglect to update their router's firmware, leaving it vulnerable to attacks. Hackers take advantage of this negligence and use it against the victim. So how can you protect yourself from firmware exploits? First and foremost, regularly update your router's firmware to the latest version. Ensure your router settings are secure and consider using a VPN for an added layer of security. Second, monitor your router logs for any unusual activity. If something looks off, take immediate action to secure your network. And finally, keep all your devices up to date with the latest security patches. All right, so far we've covered some pretty hardcore hacking tools. But what if you're not quite ready to dive into the command line? What if you're just looking for a user-friendly way to get a glimpse into the world of Wi-Fi security? Well, that's where Wi-Fi Analyzer apps come in. These handy little apps, available for both Android and iOS, give you a peek behind the curtain of your Wi-Fi network without requiring any hacking skills whatsoever. Think of them as the X-ray specs of the Wi-Fi world. One of the coolest things about Wi-Fi Analyzer apps is that they can visualize Wi-Fi networks around you. They create these colorful graphs that show you the signal strength of each network, the channels they're using, and even the types of security protocols they're employing. This can be incredibly helpful for optimizing your own Wi-Fi network. For example, if you're constantly experiencing slow speeds or dropped connections, a Wi-Fi analyzer app can help you identify potential sources of interference. You might be surprised to discover that your neighbor's Wi-Fi network is using the same channel as yours, causing a digital traffic jam. Armed with this knowledge, you can switch to a less congested channel and potentially improve your Wi-Fi performance. But that's not all. Wi-Fi analyzer apps can also help you identify security weaknesses in your network. For example, they can tell you if you're using an outdated security protocol like WEP, which, as we've learned, is highly susceptible to attacks. They can also alert you to potential security risks, such as open Wi-Fi networks or networks with weak passwords. Now, it's important to note that Wi-Fi analyzer apps don't actually hack into Wi-Fi networks. They simply collect and display information that's publicly available. Think of them as passive observers, gathering intel without actively engaging in any malicious activity. And there you have it, folks. We've explored three different methods for testing Wi-Fi security, and one for no hacking knowledge background, ranging from command line tools like Aircrack Eng and Reva to firmware exploits and user-friendly Wi-Fi analyzer apps. Remember, the information shared in this video is for educational purposes only. My goal is to raise awareness about the importance of Wi-Fi security and to empower you with the knowledge to protect yourselves and your data. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to Cyber World YT for more cybersecurity goodness. Until next time, stay safe, stay ethical, and keep those firewalls strong.